On this mission, we will learn how to do a cold start on the Saab JAS-39C, Gripen, following the procedure indicated by this mod's developers. The cold start procedure includes the following sections. Before engine start, engine start, before taxi. The approximate mission time is 5 minutes. Press space bar to begin. If the cockpit interior is too dark, activate the flashlight with left halt plus L. If the yellow cross cursor is not visible, press left halt plus left shift plus C, to show it. You can adjust the sound volume produced by the background air traffic, by moving the in cockpit sound slider, on the DCS options, audio screen, which you can access by pressing the escape key. This instructor's volume level can be adjusted with the helmet sound slider. Also, you can press spacebar to skip long voiceovers. Section 1. Before engine start. 1.1. Data transfer unit. Insert cartridges, by clicking on it. This item, the real Gripen has three data transfer media. Two DTU and one MMC. On the sim. The MMC is not visible, as it's located behind the pilot's seat. The front DTU is for the pilot and is used for mission data transfer, the back DTU is used for ground crew to record all the data and performance of the onboard systems. The MMC is used to record the picture data from the HUD and displays. 1.2. Trigger safe. Check it's at safe, covering the weapon firing button on the flight stick. 1.3. Canopy Jettison Handle. Confirm it is safe, with the handle vertical. 1.4. Parking Brake Handle. Check that it is enabled. Its handle should be pushed in. 1.5. Seat Height. Adjust as desired. The switches are animated, but the seat movement is not yet modeled. 1.6. Throttle Position. Confirm it is at its stop position, by moving the throttle forward and back. 1.7. Navigation lights. Set as required, bright on daytime, dim for night operations. 1.8. Anti-collision light. Check it's off. 1.9. Formation lights. Set as desired. On the real aircraft, position 1 is the dimmest and 4 is the brightest, but this is not modeled yet. 1.10. Landing lights. Confirm they are off. 1.11. Landing gear lever. Check that it is down. 1.12. Weapons mode, safe. Check that the master arm safety switch is set to safe. 1.13. Fuel cock. Set to on and close its cover. 1.14. Main electric power. Confirm it is off. 1.15. APU set to on. The auxiliary power unit is a very small turbine, which is used later to provide starting air for the main engine. Its yellow light illuminates while the APU is starting, a process that lasts 45 seconds. Once you are more experienced with the Gripen, you could go on with some of the remaining checklist steps, but as this is a training mission we will wait and do the steps in order. Wait until the APU green light turns on. The green light illuminates, and the yellow goes off, this indicates that the APU is ready. 1.16. Main power. Set to on. After the APU has been running for at least 10 seconds, turn the switch to on. This provides electric power to the systems, the displays are then powered up. 1.17. Fuel quantity. Check. The amount of fuel currently loaded is shown on the left MFD, within a circle on its lower left cornet, currently it reads 113%. 1.18.
left stores. Check. The under wing stores can be checked on the bottom of the left MFD, the highlighted button toggles it on or off. We can alter the store's loadout by calling up the ground crew. Let's try it, press the communications key, the backslash key. On the communications menu, select F8, ground crew, F1, rearm and refuel. If the F8 option is not visible, then press F11, previous menu, and retry. One point nineteen cockpit lights set as required. Currently, only the floodlights are implemented. Two engine start. We will contact the air traffic controller to request clearance to start engines. The Gripen uses the same simplified DCS communications that the Flaming Cliffs aircrafts use, which do not require us to tune the radio frequencies. We can reach the ATC simply by pressing the communications key, the backslash. Go ahead and press it. On the communications menu, select F5, ATC, F1, Saipan International, F3, request startup. If the F5 option is not visible, then press F11, previous menu, and retry. Springfield, one, one. Once request ATC startup. has given clearance to start, Press F12 to exit the communications menu. Clear for startup. Wind 214 at 6 meters per second. 2.1. Anti collision light. Set to on to alert the ground crew that the engine will be started. 2.2. APU running. Check its screen light to make sure that the APU is active. 2.3. Unlock throttle. Unlock and move to ground idle, all the way back. 2.4. Engine start switch. Place at start one for two one, seconds, airborne. by click and hold. 2.5. Wait for engine start. The left MFD will show Three, gauges two, for airborne. engine RPM and turbine gas temperature. Three, two, Correct title values two, are. RPM 60%, TGT, 405 Celsius degrees. The engine has reached its idle RPM. Press spacebar to continue the training. 2.6 HUD. Turn to on using its brightness knob. 3. Before taxi. 3.1. External stores. Check. Confirm once again that your current weapons loadout is correct for the upcoming sortie. You can check it on the left display, or bring up the DCS armament window by pressing left alt plus apostrophe key. 3.2. Control stick and rudder pedals. Check. Move the flight stick from side to side and front to back, while checking that the control surfaces move accordingly. Move the rudder left to right, to check it too. 3.3. Canopy. Closed. Click on the highlighted lever to close the canopy. 3.4. Chocks. Remove. Order the ground crew to remove them, if necessary. 3.6. Landing lights. Set to their taxi position. Congratulations! This concludes the before taxi section of the cold start procedure. The aircraft is now ready to taxi. You have successfully finished this training mission. On the next mission we will learn the taxi and takeoff procedures. For now please exit the training by pressing spacebar.